Hello everyone, today we will discuss what we must know about the physiology of extracorporeal CO2 removal. Extracorporeal CO2 removal was introduced in 1977 to control arterial CO2 tension and reduce ventilation, thus allowing lung rest in patients with acute respiratory failure. The key concept underlying low-flow extracorporeal CO2 removal is that due to the high CO2 content in the venous blood, the metabolically produced CO2 which is roughly 150 to 200 milliliter per minute may be theoretically removed from 400 to 500 milliliters of blood. The amount of CO2 removed, for a given sweep gas flow, increases linearly with the artificial lung surface area and the PCO2 of the premembrane blood, and logarithmically with the blood flow. There are two causes of hypoxia in extracorporeal CO2 removal. First is lung mechanics. Second is gas exchange. As in extracorporeal CO2 removal, tidal volume is reduced, the mean transpulmonary pressure decreases, and the lung tends to collapse. Experimental data on healthy animals show that the lung volume is halved after 24 hour of apnea at 5 cmh 2 of PEEP. To prevent this what we do is, raising the mean airway pressure. At times PEEP as high as the 20th to the 25th of may be required to preserve lung volumes. However we must note that these pressures are generally associated with important hemodynamic consequences, worse fluid balance and kidney function. The other method is adding an adequate short inflation or sigh. In healthy animals, it is sufficient to add one sigh of 10 to 12 milliliter per kilogram every 90 seconds to preserve lung volumes. During apnea, the alveolar gas composition is affected by the nitrogen concentration in the artificial lung, to which the alveolar nitrogen equilibrates. If the nitrogen in the artificial is lower than the natural lung, that is, if the fraction of oxygen delivered through the membrane lung is greater than FiO2, the natural lung will be progressively depleted of nitrogen. This may favor reabsorption atelectasis in the regions of the natural lung with low ventilation to perfusion ratio, increasing the pulmonary unit's instability. While the amount of oxygen exchanged through the natural lung is unmodified by extracorporeal circuit, the carbon dioxide eliminated by the natural lung decreased in proportion to the carbon dioxide eliminated through extracorporeal lung. Therefore, the respiratory quotient decreases. The change in respiratory quotient modifies the alveolar PO2 which is function of both FiO2 and the PCO2 divided by respiratory quotient, according to the alveolar gas equation. Therefore, during extracorporeal carbon dioxide removal, despite a constant FiO2, the alveolar and arterial PO2 can decrease due to a decrease in respiratory quotient. So the take-home message is that Understanding the physiology of extracorporeal carbon dioxide removal and the consequent modification in the natural lung is necessary to optimize the ventilatory management and to design stronger future clinical trials. Thank you.